the lunchroom today. I just want to let you know what's kind of different here at Valley a little bit. We'll get into our topic of customer service in just a minute. Through the next few days videos, I'm going to show you some different things that's going on here at Valley. Of course, I have to have my mask on, so I'm really hoping you guys can hear me okay. I'm trying to talk nice and loud. You notice here in the lunchroom, no more vending machines in here. I'll show you those in a minute. But all our tables are way spread out and only two people per table. That's six foot social distance. That's very important here at Valley. We're keeping that six foot social distance. In another video, I'll show you how we're doing that in the hallways. We got arrows all going one way. You can't cross paths. You gotta be six feet apart. I'll show you the floors another day. But I just wanted to kind of give you an idea of what everybody here is doing now to keep social distance, okay? Um, there's a door here to the lunchroom we've got open that you can come in, but the door on the same wall, it's not closed off. You can't come in. So the only way you can come in the lunchroom is through that door there. The only way you can exit is up by the door in section J. So it makes one big circle so we're not crisscrossing each other. Let me fix my mask. An important thing when you wear a mask is always have it over your nose and your mouth, okay? So that's just a little pointer I want to show you about Valley Industries. Okay? Okay, guys, we're going to talk about customer service. What is customer service? I think everybody's used it, but do you really know what it is? Customer service is the assistance and advice provided to the people who use your service or your product, okay? So our customer service is we go to the people that give us our jobs, okay? Because they're our customer, so we want to provide good service and advice to them. You've probably all used customer service, or your family has, if you have a problem. Hang on. This mask doesn't like me talking so much. If you have a problem with something, maybe it's your cell phone, maybe you bought something at a certain store, you call that company, Amazon, wherever you call that company if you have a problem and you want to talk to them to help resolve the problem. Now, if the person on the other end of the phone or behind the counter, whoever you talk to, helps you out, they correct your problem, they do things wonderfully, great, then that's probably good customer service and you'll go to a friend and tell them hey yeah i ordered this from here but you know what there was a little problem but they took care of it and they did this and that and just you'll you'll say all the good things that this company did for you through their customer service but if you have a bad experience maybe they didn't talk to you they hung up on you they were just rude i don't know you might tell somebody oh their customer service is not good i had this problem and it didn't work so customer service is very important to help every company with their product, their services, so that word of mouth, because that's how a lot of people hear about things. You ask a friend, you ask somebody, what did you think of this? So Jerry brings a customer in here. We do their job on time, the right way, with no problems, and get it shipped out to their customers. They're going to spread good news about us. We're going to give them good customer service and then they're gonna talk good about us, okay? Now, in order to do that, we're gonna talk about some things here at Valley that we could do as production line workers to make good customer service, okay? It all starts with Jerry in the front office. They have to do their part, but as a production line worker, these are some things you can do to ensure that we have good customer service. One of the first things, and right now it's really important too, is of washing your hands. You need to wash your hands, make sure they're nice and clean. You want to do that every break, every lunch. Right now, you want to do it all the time. It's very important to have nice, clean hands, okay? But in general, especially if you go to break, and I'm going to use cheese curls, che Cheetos is the number one thing. Eat those, what's happened? You get the cheese all over your fingers. So let's say this customer that we had a while ago, we made these books. We lined up all the papers, put them in the right order, connected the, the cover and put it in a box and shipped it out for our customer. And then it went to their customers. Now, if you're at the store and you go and pick up this book, you unwrap it, you open it up to read it or to write in it, and there's cheese curls all over this, would you be very happy about it? No, you'd be calling the 1-800 number or the customer for this book, you'd be calling them and telling them, hey, look, I bought this product. It's got food, it's real gross, it's nasty on it. I want my money back. So then that customer, that people that put out that book are gonna look and see who helped them make that. And it's gonna come back to us and they're gonna know we're the ones that passed on the cheese curls. 
and that they're going to frown upon us. They're not going to think that's very good customer service, okay? Um, here's another product that we did for someone. The little faces of pain, smiling, no pain at all. Ten up here. It's just the worst pain ever. He's got a face that nobody's to help children kind of explain what level pain they're on, okay? If a doctor's office goes and unwraps these and sees there's Cheetos on his nose or on his eyeballs, or on the back of his head, he's not going to be very happy because that's not very clean, okay? So it's always important to have clean hands when you're touching product out there. Some jobs actually require no fingerprints, so they might, we might have you wear gloves to do that job. But it's real important that we follow what the customer wants, what the customer needs. We're here to meet their needs. And having gross stuff on their product does not fill their needs. So that would be bad customer service. But if we took our time, washed our hands, made sure we had clean hands, went out there and didn't get anything on the product, that's your part in helping with the good customer service. Okay? Now the next thing that happens a lot is you might be on a job. We have a lot of stuff in envelope jobs, making little cartons, things of that nature, where you might hit your cuticle, that's the bottom part down here of your fingernail where it meets your skin. I know I've done it by shoving things in, it catches. Next thing I know, I got a little cut there, I'm bleeding. First and foremost thing, raise your hand, tell your supervisor you've cut your finger, they need to stop the line. Because what we have to do is we have to go look on the line then because blood is unacceptable. We gotta get gloves, get rid of it, biohazard, just it's not good. Those pieces of product that have blood on them would need to be considered rejects and thrown out, okay? So if you kept working and you were bleeding, you could be getting blood on all kinds of product that ends up gonna be thrown away. Then we're gonna have to call a customer and say, hey, we're 50 short because we had to reject so many. They're not gonna be happy about that. It's a waste of money, it's a waste of our time. The customer's gonna have to maybe make more product to replace the ones that got thrown away. And they're gonna let other people know, yeah, they wasted so many of my, my pieces that I had to spend more money to complete the job. So good part of that would be, if it happens, which it does, it's an accident, it happens, but tell your supervisor immediately, they'll stop the line. Maybe there's only two rejects. That's a lot better than 50. Then they'll help you get cleaned up. You'll get a Band-Aid put on. You also might get asked to wear one of these little, I've already kind of opened this one, so it's a little bit harder, but it's just a little finger wrap that'll go down over your finger on top of the Band-Aid to help protect it. Or you may be asked to wear a glove. Selena Smith, call station 202, please. Selena Smith, call 202, please. Or you might be asked to wear a glove on top of the Band-Aid, too. All to help protect your hand and to protect the product, okay? Um, another really important thing is when you're on a job, give it your all, okay? You may not like the job, but good customer service is us doing the best of our ability. And that's one of our rules, right? Number two, always work to the best of your ability. That's huge for customer service because they give us so much time to do a product and if we're working to the best of our ability, we're gonna meet their deadline to make the customer happy. Good customer, ha good customer service equals a good, happy customer, which then equals return business. If the customer's happy, they're gonna come back. Think if you go somewhere to eat and you're just really happy and love that food and it was so good, you're gonna go back to that restaurant to eat. So good customer service is very important. Keys, also I wanna include some keys to good customer service. Keys to good customer service is building good relationships with your customers, okay? That means a friendly, nice environment, um, you're completing things correctly, you're meeting their goals. Those are some keys to having good customer relations, okay? Good customer service, as you wanna build that relationship with them. So they know you're gonna do your job on time, you know you're nice and friendly, and you know you're gonna complete it correctly. Those are just some key points for good customer service, okay? To go along with the always working to the best of your ability, is I know that we get some jobs in here, when you walk out on the floor and you find out the job you're on, you're like, oh, I don't wanna do this one. Or you might just not want to do it. Maybe you have a friend that's on a different break and you're on this break doing this job you don't want to do. Or you just want to be on a break with your friend. So you think in your head, well, if the supervisor thinks I can't do this job, they're going to move me. We've had people 
mess up on jobs on purpose. Do them wrong, tear them, different things so they can get moved off a job. That is not doing good customer service. That is not being a good Bali Industries worker. That's not working to the best of your ability. That's not helping out your team. You guys, we can't be destroying customer's product, okay? Definitely not a good customer service part. It's gonna cost them more money to replace them. We're not gonna meet the amount of they need done for their job. Also, that interferes with the time that we're gonna work on that job because now the supervisor has to go back and get all their stuff and deal with you who's messing the job up on purpose. Now, yes, there are some jobs you guys try your best on and you just can't get, and I understand that. But if you're doing a job for a day and the next day you come in, and then all of a sudden you're just doing things absolutely bonkers, crazy, we're gonna know you can do the job, but you're just kind of messing it up on purpose. We don't want that, okay? We don't want that for you. We don't want you to get in trouble. We don't wanna to have to spend the time talking to you about that. We don't wanna have the bad product. We don't wanna have to call our customer and tell them we can't meet their goals because we're 20 short because somebody tore them all up because we have 20 rejects. Whenever you do something like that to a job, we may not be able to fix it. Sometimes there's mistakes and we can fix those. But other times when things are really bad, torn and stuff like that, they gotta get put in the reject bin and the customer doesn't always give us extra stuff for that. Sometimes it's the exact amount. So we gotta be careful and do the job the correct way, no sabotaging, no messing up on purpose so that you can get moved to a different break. Along with being on a job you don't like, now I know there's reasons sometimes, maybe there was a med mix up, maybe your roommate was up all night, maybe you just didn't sleep well. There's all these reasons that are good reasons why you may come into work a little tired. But we can't have you sitting on the line, on a job with your head down on the table, all kicked back. What if Jerry happens to have that customer coming through on a tour for him to check on his work, to check on his job that we're doing for him? And he comes out here and he sees people laying their head down, sleeping, maybe somebody's sleeping and drooling. I mean, supervisors try to stay on everybody, but there's a lot of people, okay? That's not working to the best of ability, not, work, not meeting customer service. We wanna be up, we wanna be professional. We wanna be able to show at any given time if these customers come on the floor that we care about their product. We care about them. We care about their job. So we need to be sitting up, we need to be working hard. If you're on downtime waiting for a new job, still that shows respect to any customers that are coming in because you're sitting up nice and alert and being professional. They're gonna walk in and say, wow, this group, I noticed that group's not working, but they're all sitting so nicely. Versus what's up with those guys? They all got their head on the table, they're stretched out, they're being goofy. Professionalism, big part of customer service. When we've talked about being professional, this is where it falls into. It all kind of connects here at work, okay? Um, the last point I wanna talk about is, hmm, how do I say this? We gotta think what comes out our mouth, guys. Maybe you're on that job you don't like, customer comes out, and you don't know he's for that job, and you're talking how bad it is, how much you hate it, how hard it is, how you don't wanna do it and you're just talking bad about the job. You never know who's coming through our production floor. Plus, I know if I come by and I hear you talking bad about the work, we're gonna have a little talk. Probably Becky, the plant man, plant project manager, your supervisor, Terry Crow, if Jim McGuire comes out. But again, the customer could be on the floor at any time. You don't know who's with who. I don't sometimes know what customer's with what job. So you always wanna be on your best behavior, not talking bad about a job. You want to be positive. You want to, we talked about having a positive attitude. All part of customer service, professionalism, positive attitude, the five golden rules. Everything we do and we've been talking about, they all come together to achieve something bigger, okay? So those are just a few little things that I wanted to talk to you about, about customer service. Customer service is a lot bigger, but for you guys, the production floor, those are some big points for you guys to ensure that we have good customer service. Because so if you do all those things properly, we're gonna get our job done on time. We're gonna get our job done correctly. We're gonna get our job done nice and clean. 
and we're going to get our job packed up and send out to the customer on time to make him happy. Because a happy customer does what? He comes back. A happy customer returns. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you a little tidbit about the vending machines with a little help from our friend Scooby. Okay? Okay, so like I said, we have the vending machine down here now. We've got a table set up. And we're going to have two staff that are working the snack area now. You'll be giving them your money on the tray. They'll take the money, get your item. A different person will get your item out and return it onto a tray. This is less contact. We're going to do it about everybody touching the vending machines. Now let's watch Scooby get a snack. Thank you.